It's time for Food and Wine. Flower edition. Ooh. Hey there, ma'am fam. We are here at Epcot today to kick off the Flower and Garden Festival. We will be here over the next few days checking out everything this festival has to offer from the beautiful topiaries and gardens to eating our way around all of the outdoor kitchens. This is my favorite festival of the year. I'm so excited. Epcot is so gorgeous right now, so let's get into it. Come on. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Epcot and my favorite festival. Look at the beautiful new Wish Topiary. This is one of the brand new topiaries for this year. We'll be checking them all out as we rock around the festival. They're one of my favorite things about Flower and Garden because I think they're so amazing. Like the horticulture team are geniuses. Like look at the succulents making up her dress. And then it's a hose for Star. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. All right, gotta grab our festival passport. These are a must have when you come to the Epcot festivals. It's gonna have all of the booths listed with all of the menus, your garden graves, which is the food crawl of this festival is in the back. Absolute need when you come in here. It's on the app too, and there's an allergy guide on the app, but I like having the physical thing too. Flower and Garden runs this year from February 28th through May 27th, a little bit shorter than last year, which I actually appreciate. I like a little diet Epcot mixed in throughout the year, but you still have a nice long time to come and enjoy this beautiful festival. As with every festival we do, we polled you, the ma'am fam, on what our budget should be, and you told us it was $100 per person or $200 in total. So we have grabbed our gift cards, each loaded with $100 each and are set to set off to our first booths. Okay, I lied. I know I said we were gonna to go to our booths first, but we definitely got distracted by this beautiful figment topiary here in the center of the garden. Oh my goodness. He looks so cute. Now, normally the figment topiary is over in front of imagination, but I love that since they opened up the gardens here, they've got him with the flowers and space to birth right behind him. Stunning. I also, this is a tiny detail, but I love these like picks that go into the garden with Spike the Bee on them. Um, I am a terrible gardener. I cannot keep anything alive, but my mother is a wonderful gardener. And I have a lot of memories of childhood of going to nurseries with her and her telling me what to look for on those picks. Like this is the flower we're looking for. So I don't know, I just feel weirdly nostalgic looking at those. <laughs> Headed to our first booth and to check out a few more topiaries. But wanted to mention that when we picked up our gift cards, we checked out Spike's Pollination Nation, which is the scavenger hunt for this festival. The little scavenger plates are $10, and then you're gonna walk around, you're gonna look for Spike the Bee planted in a bunch of the gardens, match the seed to where you are, and then when you're completed, you can bring it back to any of the Disney gift shops and get a prize. And the prize this year is really cute, y'all. It's tiny cornhole. It's so cute. It's adorable. You get to pick one of the four little cornhole designs. And I just think this is such a fun addition to the festivals because it keeps your kids engaged and wanting to look at the different garden displays while mom and dad, you get to walk around and eat and drink. And speaking of garden displays, look how cute Donald is right here. Look a little bee on his forehead. He is just the cutest. I am obsessed with this festival. It's just so beautiful. And these topiaries are so big. That topiary yeah. has got to be eight feet tall. Oh, it's it's sure. unbelievable the detail in it too. Picked up our first item and probably surprising to no one, it's from a Joffrey's. Now, I should note that I am a 2024 seasonal beverage ambassador for Joffrey's. It's um, probably the thing I'm most proud of in my entire life, uh, which means that they were very kind and sent us a voucher to try all of their flower and garden specialty beverages. So the Joffrey's drinks today will not count towards our budget. And also shout out Joffrey's, I love you, thank you. And thank you to all of you for tagging me in pictures of your shaky Jamaicas because I think they noticed. <laughs> this is an iced honey jasmine latte. So it is espresso and then a honey jasmine syrup, milk topped with whipped cream and graham cracker crumbles. Cheers. Mm. You know, that's pretty darn good. If I were to get this again, I would not put whipped cream on it because I'm not a whipped cream girly, but the coffee drink itself is actually not too sweet. And I think that's because it's honey jasmine. So it's not like an artificial fruity flavor. It's just a little bit of light sweetness. I go a little bit lighter on the milk too because I'm a black coffee drinker, but overall this is a very delicious, very sippable iced latte, a little bit unique. I like that. Coffee in hand, we are now gonna swing by and look at one of the newest topiaries, Groot. Look at him. He's growing up out of the ground with the different bushes and holding the Greenhouse Mix Volume 1. 
a very kind cast member told us that he plays music every 20 minutes on the 20, starting at the top of the hour. So like the o'clock, the 20, the 40, etc. That's so cool. He's adorable. What an awesome topiary addition. Yeah, well done, Disney. All right, it is now time for our first booth and I have lost Molly. Okay. Hey. It's my favorite topiary. Yeah, but our first brew is brunch cot. The only thing that could lure me from Buzz is brunch. Yes. We'll make it to brunch cot eventually. There's just so much to look at. This is one of my favorite gardens around the festival. So in addition to the giant topiaries, they also have these smaller gardens with designated kinds of plants. And this is the prehistoric gardens, if you couldn't tell by the dinosaurs in here. I'm literally obsessed with these metal dinosaurs. I wish I could find them to put them in my home. Um, and these are all plants that would have been around in the age of the dinosaurs. There's also spice gardens in Morocco and Italy. There's orchids in Mexico. There's a gnome garden. So just cute little displays to uh, tickle your eyeballs as you're enjoying the festival. Saw some adorable topiaries of Huey, Dewey, and Louie, but we have finally made it to our first stop, well, the first food stop, and that is Brunch Cot, where we have picked up two returning favorites, the avocado toast and the fried cinnamon roll bites. First up, the avocado toast. It's got marinated tomatoes, plant-based cheese crumbles on toasted ciabatta. Now, this is also our first dish on the Garden Graze. The Garden Graze is the foodie crawl at this festival, and it's all plant-based items. So, the way these food crawls work are there are a number of participating items. Anytime you pick up one of these items, ask the cast members and they will put a stamp in your book. Once you have five stamps, you can return and get a free prize, which is more food, because again, you get rewarded for eating with more eating. Now, you don't have to get five different things. You don't have to do it all on the same day. You could get five of the exact same thing anytime throughout the festival to redeem it. But I always love doing these little foodie crawls because it's a good way to try new things that you might not otherwise. And I'm especially excited because this is always one of my favorites at the festival. You got this. <laughs> I am a basic millennial who loves brunch and especially loves avocado toast. And this is delightful. There's a ton of that kind of still chunky avocado down on the bottom. It's spiced really well. You've got the ciabatta that's holding up to it. And I love these fresh tomatoes on top that are adding some brightness and acidity. Now, the only thing I probably wouldn't like about this dish is the plant-based cheese. And that's just because I don't care for plant-based cheese. Cheese is my favorite food. I can tell it's plant-based. I've never met a plant-based cheese that tastes like cheese, and this is no different. However, there's not a ton of it on here, so I think it's supposed to be replicating like a goat cheese. If anything, it just adds a little bit of salt to the dish, a little bit of nuttiness to it, but I could take it or leave it in this case. Uh, overall though, if you're a plant-based eater or even just a lover of brunch, this is a nice, refreshing bite. And I am trying the fried cinnamon roll bites with cream cheese frosting and some candied bacon. I remember this being delectable last year, so I've got my, I've got some high hopes. I'm, I'm ready to catch whatever contents come out of this. Yo. Oh, wow. Oh my. I don't think it's actually over sugared, which is pretty rare for me. Crispy exterior, buttery, light interior that leads to just some incredible filling there. It tastes lightly caramelly, some lightness from the cream cheese. Yeah, this makes the list. I may need to check last year's footage. I think it used to be full of the cream cheese filling. And so now... It's a cinnamon roll filling. It's a cinnamon roll filling. And my it's goodness. It's plussed its game up. Love that. Oh my gosh. There's just enough, there's so much cinnamon. Not an over, not a, not a crazy amount, but there's so much cinnamon that it offsets any of the sugar that's inside that filling. I know it's there, but I don't mind. Whoa. So good. Popped across the way to Farmer's Feast where they have moved the legendary corn on the cob. So if you're a corn on the cob fan like I am, this is where you need to come this year. But besides the corn on the cob, what is so cool about the menu at this booth in particular is it changes as the seasons throughout the festival change. So you're going to have a different menu right now than you are in about a month and then another one to close out the festival. So it's one you can return to time and time again. Four our trip today of course we got that corn on the cob which is another stamp on the garden grays amazing and then we also got the strawberry rhubarb upside down cake all right i am going to try the grilled street corn on the cob with savory garlic spread and plant-based cheese let's get into it whoa that's a lot of garlic does it have the juice 
Oh, it has the juice. I can't imagine a more wonderful thing. Is that joke dead yet? Uh, maybe. Probably. We're, We're gonna old. keep it living yeah. forever. The garlic flavor is there. It dominates right off the bat, and then you get the sweetness of the corn. I gotta be honest, I don't really taste Parmesan. This is a plant-based cheese, so if you're getting this expecting it to taste like traditional Parmesan, you're not gonna get that. What you're getting instead is some slight salt, a little bit of nuttiness, um, but not in the same like sort of strength that you'd get from an actual Parmesan cheese. But as the salt element to the dish, it's serving its purpose. What I do love is that this is grilled perfectly right on stage, so you get to watch your food be made. And it's tasty. This is the strawberry rhubarb upside down cake. It's served with a creme fraiche whipped cream. I am so excited to try this. I love strawberries. And I don't think I've had rhubarb. I might have had rhubarb. But I do love cake. Mm. It's sweeter than I expected it to be. Flavor-wise, I'm into it, but texturally, it's throwing me a little bit. Whatever the, the sugar water juice mixture is that they put in the, the bottom of the thing and put the fruit and then flip it with when they make the upside down cake, it's making the fruit really mushy. And that I don't think happens as much with pineapple when you do pineapple upside down cake. And so that's kind of throwing me because it's, it's kind of just not an appealing texture to me. It's really good flavor wise. I really like the rhubarb kind of like grittiness that's being added. I love the lightness of this clearly house made whipped cream, um, but I would probably skip this one just because it's not my favorite texturally. And I think there's probably gonna be better desserts. Popping into Creation Shop while we're right here for one, air conditioning always, and two, to check out the festival merch this year. Kicking things off with a new lug bag of little orange bird. Also have a lug brand pass holder bag featuring Spike the Bee. Different lug brand pass holder bag featuring Spike the Bee. Pass holder Spike the Bee shirt. Orange bird lounge fly. Orange bird spirit jersey. Orange bird flower pot. Orange bird ornament. Orange bird salt and pepper shaker. General Epcot salt and pepper shaker. Orange bird juice container. Orange bird turvis. Orange you glad you met me shirt. <laughs> oh, orange bird. Orange bird ears. Orange bird mug. And I think this is a juicer on top, so you're supposed to like juice your own orange juice into the orange bird. Orange bird button up. Trying to figure out what the next orange bird thing is. Orange bird lantern. It's solar powered. Orange bird apron. Orange bird hat. Different orange bird t-shirt. Orange bird magic band. An orange plush that transforms into an orange bird. Moving on to like a general Epcot mini style collection. We've got a flower pot a garden marker. There's that trash can salt and pepper shaker again. You can have mini trash can table time. <laughs> mini, cause like Minnie Mouse, but also cause, okay. Keychain, pink t-shirt, garden hat, mug, fresh flower bag, a different style of garden marker, mini spirit jersey. We've also got a cocoa inspired collection this year. Loving this. We've got a bucket hat. I wish I could pull off a bucket hat. Too old. Blue t-shirt, pink t-shirt, Coco Turvis, Coco Blanket, Coco little bag. Do you put a do you put a pot in that? It's just like a little bag. I think you put a pot in it. That's my guess. Someone that knows how to garden, let me know. Coco Plate. And what would a merch drop be without pins? Let's take a look. You've got Orange Bird, big uh, big Orange Bird, Butterfly Topiary. I mean a Mickey sheep pin. These are cute. Look, they're different topiaries. You've got Sorcerer Mickey, Beauty and the Beast. Allison Mad Hatter, mystery pin, mini pin, pass holder Spike the Bee pin, different pass holder Spike the Bee pin, orange bird Apple Watch band, Spike the Bee Apple Watch band, butterfly Apple Watch band, Coco Apple Watch band. And for magnets, we've got butterflies, different butterflies, Coco and orange bird. And I think that's it. Whew, what a haul, what a haul. All right, as we make our way into the World Showcase, we've got another beautiful topiary. We've got Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto on a picnic, joined by the pranksters Chip and Dale, who are, well, they're helping themselves to all of the delicious feast that Mickey and Minnie have brought. And Mickey brought flowers. Oh, we love love. How stunning is this Encanto topiary? This was the entrance topiary last year. I love it so much. It's so beautiful. And then if you look at all the details, like look at Mirabelle's skirt with all of the little uh, things she's sewn on there. And then you've got the different color tones within all the different dresses. And you've got Antonio. I love the succulents on Isabella's dress. Alan, let's do something fun. Yeah. Okay, when I say go, walk, don't run, because we don't run. We don't run. To Fumbles. whichever um, Madrigal's problems you associate with. Oh, which traumas we have? Which trauma do you have? Okay, yeah. Yeah, ready? 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 ready go. No.
Yeah, you got. Yeah, I got. It. I yeah yeah I feel you. Yeah. Uh, fun game, man fam. Tell us which Madrigal you identify with down in the comments. Made our way into World Showcase and swung by Trowel and Trellis, which is hosted by Impossible, so it's not surprising that we have picked up the Impossible Farmhouse Meatball. This is kind of a meatball wrap with a lentil bread, spinach, marinated vegetables, and a creamy herb aioli. This is another stamp on the Garden Grays. It's, wind it's blustery out here. Flavor-wise? It's pretty good. I really like this kind of like roasted red pepper, creamy herb aioli. It's very nice. It's adding a little bit of zest, a little bit of spice. It's nice and peppery as well. The lentil bread texture isn't my favorite. It's kind of falling apart. Um, it's not like a wrap. Like it looks like it kind of could be a tortilla, but it's kind of falling apart. Um, but it's got a nice kind of grain earthy flavor to it. It's just a little gritty. As you can see, the meatball is fine. It's a texture thing for me. I, I'm sorry and I love you to all of my plant-based um, friends. I'm just not a fan of impossible meat because it just texturally doesn't convince me that it's it's meat. Um, but it's spiced really well, it's cooked well, it has a nice smoky flavor. So I think if you're a plant-based eater, this is definitely a good choice. It's nice and hearty, um, but for me, this is not something I would choose to eat again. Just swung past one of the most beautiful topiaries that I've seen this festival, and it's new, and it's Dante Miguel. And Dante is honestly breaking my mind. The way the, the, the marigolds look like it's holding him up as he's leaping, that's incredible. And appropriately, we went to Jardín de Fiestas and picked up some delicious treats. Well, hopefully delicious treats. There are, however, no tables, so you know what time it is. It is trash can table time. It's trash can table time. Ba -ba -da. Hi. That's my grito. Did you grito it in yeah. table time? Well, we're my cocoa. So. Oh, I love it. Yeah, no. Okay, as far as food goes, we picked up the tamale de rajas and the sope di chilorillo. Oh my gosh, this just looks and smells very good. For the sope, this is made with guajillo pepper braised pork on fried corn shells with black beans, shredded cabbage, Crema Mexicana, queso fresco, and chives. The first thing that I want to acknowledge is the absolute density of the masa and the corn on the bottom here, followed by the black beans. So it's very much layered. You have the uh, the masa, then you have black bean, and then this one you get the meat and your spicy sauce along with the cabbage. I gotta say, love the black beans, great flavor, nicely spiced. I love the sauce on top. It is acidic and spicy, so if you are spice averse, you might want to skip this one or just ask for no spice on it, or no sauce on top. The meat itself, while it is flavored really nicely, is a touch dry. Um, so I think that's the only note I would give this, but all together with the, the cheese sort of cutting through the spiciness of the sauce, I think it's a really complete dish. I just wish that the meat was moist and not dry. That's, but other than that, I enjoy it. And I'm digging into the tamale de rajas, which is made with poblano peppers, corn, and cheese in the masa with a poblano cream sauce, crema mexicana, pickled carrots, and onions with chives. Super excited to dig into this and excited that this is a vegetarian option in Mexico, which you don't always get in a savory dish. I'm so excited. I love tamales. Now, this one's like half the masa, so you don't have to unwrap it or anything. It's just this delicious looking mixture here. Gotta get some of the pickled radish or onion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's best of best, oh my gosh. Oh, there's the poblano peppers coming in. Now, if you've never had a tamale, the texture is between grits and mashed potatoes because it is cornmeal that's like ground up and mixed with all the different things. And so it's not as creamy as mashed potatoes, but it's not as gritty as grits. That's the best way to describe it. But there's so much flavor in this. It's not really hot. You can taste the pepper, but it's not hot spicy. And then you've got the delicious queso fresco. I love the acidic bite from the pickled onions. Best of the fest. Nailed it, Mexico. Working our way into the Odyssey building now. This is where the Citrus Blossom booth is located, which is themed to that cutie little orange bird. But actually, as a fun surprise, Florida Fresh is in here too right now. The booth had some technical difficulties, so this Odyssey building right now, opening day, has both festival booths in here. I don't know how long that'll stay for, but Florida Fresh is supposed to have its own booth, but. That's fine, we adapt and overcome. I've said it for basically every festival that we've done, but I love that they're using this building as a productive space during festivals, because one, who doesn't want to sit in air conditioning for a little bit? And two, who doesn't love the adorable theming? It's Orange Bird, so there's some animation of him projecting on the wall. There's some cute artwork everywhere. You've also got some of the Orange Bird merchandise available in here. Now, quick little Disney History 101. If you're not familiar with Orange Bird and you're like, why is there so much merchandise with a bird that has an orange for a face? I'm very confused. I understand, I would be 
be too. But Orange Bird actually dates back before Walt Disney World opened. He was first created in 1969 as a partnership between the Disney Company and the Florida Citrus Commission. He was their mascot because they sponsored the Enchanted Tiki Room when Magic Kingdom opened, as well as Sunshine Tree Terrace. Sunshine Tree Terrace is now located when you first get into Adventureland, but it used to be where Aloha Isle is. And in fact, the Citrus Swirl, which is the frozen orange juice and vanilla soft serve swirl, that actually existed in Disney World before the Dole Whip. So Orange Bird is an OG, and honestly, I really wish they would bring him back as a character meet and greet. Inside, you can also get the adorable Orange Bird sippy cup. And inside of that, you can pick up the non-alcoholic orange and lemon smoothie. In our first c, c combo booth, we have Citrus Blossom and Florida Fresh. From that, we have picked up from the Citrus Blossom, a beer flight, very much looking forward to that. Some orange sesame tempura shrimp. And from Florida Fresh, we have picked up Molly. This is the strawberry shortcake, plant-based, another garden graze check. We are just really powering through that. Motoring through that. And a new item this year, the Cubanito sandwich. Ooh. First up, the Cubanito with mojo marinated pork belly, ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, and a stone ground mustard sauce. And I'm really looking forward to this. Don't you ruin me. Mm. Okay. Typically in a Cuban, I'm looking for three major things. One, crisp bread. That's about half of that is crisp. The other half, because we were filming, unfortunately, has become soggy. I imagine if you eat this fresh, it's all gonna be very crisp. So I'm gonna go ahead and award it that. The second is a really, really good ground mustard. This mustard is good, but it doesn't like shine through and it's not gonna punch you in the face. So if you aren't a mustard fan, you'll probably be okay with this, but if you like mustard and you're looking for that, it's only sort of halfway there. And lastly, is a good amount of meat. And I can say, for a small sandwich like this, I think that's a pretty good amount of meat. This is a darn good Cuban sandwich. Is it the best I've ever had? No. But I think this is pretty darn good and worth it here. I'm gonna dig into the orange sesame tempura shrimp. It's got an orange chili sauce on top, and it's actually a pretty good serving for $7. You've got like five, five shrimp skewers. Wow. Ooh. I am delightfully surprised by this. Alan's making a face behind the camera with the same face. The tempura is actually very light. I love tempura shrimp. This is how I learned to like seafood was tempura shrimp. Uh, it also, the sauce is definitely sweet because it's orange, but it came out of nowhere with a little punch, a little bit of heat. If you're super heated, verse, skip it. It's not too hot though, but it's definitely hotter than I expected it to be. Again, I think you get a good portion size. I think this is a, uh, a fun twist on a very classic and beloved food. This is, this is nice. This is a sleeper hit. And rounding out our eats here before we get to our drinks is the Florida Strawberry Shortcake. Now, last year, this was not plant-based. This year, it is. I enjoyed it last year. I'm hoping I'm gonna enjoy it the same amount this year. You know, there's no point in going for a dainty bite here. Got everything, strawberry, whipped cream, I assume, or whipped cream substitute, and shortcake. Okay, are there things that I would do to make it better? Yes, but is this solid? 100%. The whipped cream itself still tastes like whipped cream. Strawberries have been macerated in a sugar, um, or a sugar-like syrup for a bit, so they are very, very flavorful, but also not super sweet. The one sort of downfall is that the cake is a little bit grainy and it's not super moist. I think soaking that in the same like juice that the strawberries have been macerated in might change that because at the top where it has happened, where it started to soak in, is like A plus cake at that, at that point. But it's a really solid dessert and I think it hasn't really had much fall off from last year when it wasn't plant-based. And now it's time for Molly and Alan's beer review corner. Let's see, looking at this beer flight from Citrus Blossom, they are all citrusy beers. You have a Southern Tier Brewing Company Orange Twist Imperial Ale, a Left Hand Brewing Lemon Drop Shandy from Longmont, Colorado. The first one's from New York, by the way. And a Stone Brewery Tangerine Express Hazy IPA from California. Which one do you want to start with? Yeah, I'm going to start with the IPA. You want the IPA? Yeah, I, I could have guessed that. I would like the Lemon Drop Shandy. It's like drawing the sword from the stone. To I me, Excalibur. I All win. Right. Here we are. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Can I order like two full of these? Mm. And just like walk? I, mean, I, 
I'm done. I don't need to try any more beers. That is so good. Is that the shandy one? That's the lemon. Um, it tastes like Line and Kugel's lemon shandy, but a little bit more beer flavor. Um, that one is a little bit sweeter. It is so refreshing. It is so crisp. It is going to be so perfect walking around hot Epcot with a full-size one of those at some point. Shandy. I mean, it's called that way because it's almost like a lemonade style. Ooh, that's good too. Right? Uh, that hits the nail on the head. As far as the tangerine IPA goes, if you are hesitant to try IPAs, mm -hmm. there are a couple of beers that I would steer you towards. This is one of them because a lot of the hallmarks of IPAs citrus flavor come from the hops that are used, but sometimes that can be too acrid for a lot of folks. This just tastes like citrus tangerine and it doesn't have a lot of like the pine flavors that people are turned off to in IPAs. I think this is really good. This is a bright IPA that I could sip on in the heat, which is rare for an IPA. I want you to drink this and tell me what it tastes like. Okay, Orange Twist Imperial Ale. It smells like a um, dreamsicle. It tastes like a dreamsicle. It tastes like a dreamsicle. If you oh. like an orange creamsicle, Ow. the soda, or the ice cream, that's what this tastes like with a little hint of beer. I mean, down to like the creaminess of that beer. I, yeah, I'm surprised. I looked at the list because it's an it's an ale, and I was like, this has got to be some kind of like milk mm. beer. But no, it's very good. It's just a little bit Ow. too creamy for me. Um, my order of these beers goes Shandy 1, IPA 2, Ale 3. IPA 1, Shandy 2, Ale 3. Great beer flight, though. I think this will probably end up on Best of the Fist. It's on mine, 100%. Yeah. This, this flight is going to be, I mean, I think it can be shared, a share Best with Us item, but this is just... If you get one beer flight, I think sight unseen right now, I'd probably steer you towards this one. We have more on the list, but that's bold. We do. Bold claim. See how it works out for me. I feel confident though. Made our way through Norway. There's not any booths there, but we did Ool, both the Troll and the Anna and Elsa topiaries. And now we have found ourselves in China where there is a very cute panda bear topiary. Unfortunately, it is behind a barrier, so you cannot hug it, but you can hug it in spirit with your mind. Uh, and stopped by the Lotus Blossom, which is the booth in China, to pick up one of my returning favorites, the house-made cheesy crab wontons, aka crab rangoons. Now, they don't normally come with this darker sauce on top. This is the spicy peanut sauce that goes on the mala chicken skewer. The cast member looked like me like I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when I asked him to put it on the crab rangoon, but I promise you it's delightful. <laughs> Mm, mm, it's like the best crab rangoon I've ever had because they are made fresh and it's crab with a C, not crab with a K. Now that I'm biased against crab with a K, I often order Chinese delivery just to order like six orders of crab rangoon. Alan is nodding his head behind the camera. So you've got that nice crab mixed with cream cheese, fresh, warm wontons, nice flake and crispy. And if it's not too busy, you can ask nicely for them to put the spicy peanut sauce on it if you want to try this hack. There was not a long line, otherwise I wouldn't do it. Um, but it's got a little bit of heat, it's got a little bit of peanut butter, which again, it sounds like this is not gonna work at all, but it's one of my favorite dishes with or without the peanut sauce. <sighs> I'm very happy right now. Just swung by a refreshment outpost and picked up the seasonal fruit parfait, which is our final item on the garden grays. I mean, I'm not gonna brag, but we knocked that out really fast, so go team go. And we also picked up the Sweetwater Brewing Half a Gummy Fruit Punch IPA. That is a mouthful, but all of it sounds delicious. And if not delicious, at least interesting. Okay, this is the Seasonal Fruit Parfait. This is Mango Dole Whip with a sweet chili sauce on top, some tahini, and at the bottom it looks like we have some fresh fruit here as well. And I am ready to eat. Bags are so handy. Like, guys, get a bag. Okay, anyway. I think I really, really like that. Oh, and then the chili comes through. Okay, now, the mango dough up is nice, subtly sweet, good mango flavor, but what I'm really loving is the sweet chili sauce with the tahini. It almost starts out sort of sweet and sour, and then you get the tahini hit. If you're spice averse, you don't like spicy food at all, don't try this, there is some heat to it, but I think it's really welcome. It's a really nice sweet heat combo. Now we're gonna dig down, try to get our fruit out here. It's looking like some pineapple and mango. Mango. Just mango, I can confirm. There's something red. Where's the red? watermelon? That one. Oh, hold on. It's watermelon, but it's soaked up. Oh! <laughs> it's soaked up the chili sauce. Whew! I mean, I like this. Refreshing and spicy. I'm a big fan. And I am gonna try this beer, which I'm very excited about because Sweetwater Brewing is from Atlanta, which is where I'm from, and I've been to this brewery before, and I'm a big fan of their beers. So, but I've not tried this one. It 
if Hawaiian Punch and beer had a beautiful baby, it would be this. It literally tastes like Hawaiian Punch or a Capri Sun fruit punch flavor and a beer mixed together. It's not very hoppy, which is what you expect with an IPA. Like Alan said earlier about that tangerine one, if you're not sure if you're gonna like an IPA but you like a fruity beer, this is really, really delicious. And I'm shocked at how much it does taste like fruit punch. Stopped by the Baumarkt in Germany. Nice. Thank you, I'm doing my best. Uh, and picked up a fan favorite. It's me, I'm the fan. Uh, this, <laughs> is, <laughs> this is the toasted pretzel bread with black forest ham and melted cheese. Y'all, look at this. Look how much cheese. It's so good. You have a warm pretzel roll and it's been split into four. It's been quartered up at the top so you can kind of pull it apart. And then you've got that kind of salty, but a little sweet of the Black Forest ham. And then you've got this melty, nutty cheese on top. It kind of a little bit in the hopest hope of my dreams reminds me of the amazing pretzel bread pull apart in Disneyland. This is like the closest Disney World's ever gotten, um, but it is melty, it is ooey, it is gooey. Fan favorite. No notes, five stars. <laughs> Germany is home to IMO, one of the best topiaries at the festival. You've got Snow White and all seven dwarves. I think they are so darn cute. And in honor of their presence, Alan, last year we went and posed like our favorite dwarf. Uh -huh. This year I think we should go pose like the dwarf we feel right now. Okay. The one we that matches our emotions. All right, you're up first. Oh, happy. It's my favorite festival, so I'm happy. Great. Feeling Doc. That's an emotion. Put your satchel. Satchel. It's Molly from the future here from the daytime tomorrow, and I just gotta say, I love Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs Topiary, but look at these gnomes that are outside the bathrooms. They are so cute, I wanna cry a little bit. Is that dramatic? Well, we had to stop by and see the train where of course they've got the awesome banners for every festival, so this time is no different. And we are now moving through Italy where we are skipping the Italy booth because I've gotta be honest, I'm not ready to be hurt again. I've not made it past the previous engagements, but hopefully one day soon, we'll get there. But you know what we're not skipping? We are not skipping seeing the Lady in the Tramp topiaries. And I love these topiaries so much because ladies' ears continue to grow as the festival continues and they just become longer and more bushy. And it's so cute. But we are headed into the American Adventure where we get some more treats. The band tonight is like a 90s R&B cover band and they're bumping some boys to men Mariah Carey right now and I'm having a very hard time focusing on anything but how good they are. Uh, anyway, we stopped by the Joffrey's car here in the American Adventure to pick up two more of the Joffrey's Flower and Garden special beverages. This is the Tropical Frosted Iced Tea. It is Minute Maid Frozen Lemonade Iced Tea Hawaiian Island Syrup. I don't know what that is. And it's garnished with an orange. I chose to make this one spirited, which you can do with Grey Goose Vodka. This one is an annual pass holder exclusive. You can get it at any of the World Showcase Joffrey's carts. It is a BPL, which is a blueberry pie latte. I came up with that joke all on my own. Alan did not say that first. Uh huh. Anyway, nope. again, pass holder exclusive. It is espresso, milk, and then it's blueberry and white chocolate syrups. I chose to get it iced. You can get any of them spirited, but this one's just a coffee. Satchel. <laughs> Third time's a charm. There it is. <laughs> This one is definitely sweeter than the one I had over by Mission Space. The blueberry syrup is a little artificial tasting for my preference, so I probably would ask them to go lighter on that. Um, but the coffee at Joffrey's is so good, like genuinely I love the flavor of their actual coffee. And I love that even in these very flavored lattes it shines through. This one, just a little too sweet for my black coffee drinking palate. Jared's crushing it on the sacks. Okay, if an Arnold Palmer and Hawaiian Punch 
had a beautiful baby, it would be this plus vodka. It's not super duper sweet. It mostly tastes like the lemonade and iced tea, which again is an Arnold Palmer. The syrup isn't really shining through. You can definitely taste that there's vodka. It's light, it's refreshing. Yes. Y'all, this band is crushing the game right now. And what better time to talk about the Garden Rocks concert series. So much like at Food and Wine with the E to the B concert series, a variety of musicians comes in to play free concerts here during Flower and Garden. They typically play three times a night and there are artists ranging from a variety of cover bands to popular 90s hits like Sister Hazel. You got the plain white tees coming. Country fans, Jody Messina's on her way. This is a really fun way to add in some entertainment and just enjoy yourself while you're at the festival. Now, if there's an artist you're super duper excited about seeing, you can get in line really early, but there's also dining packages. You can book dining packages in advance to get reserved seating for the shows at restaurants like Spice Road Table, Le Cellier, Coral Reef, and the Beer Garden, or there is a walk-up only first come first serve dining package that's a little bit less expensive at Regal Eagle Barbecue. So if there's a band you're dying to see, I definitely recommend looking into one of those, but I love live music, I love that they do this, and I love that they've expanded the live entertainment and the concerts from just Eat to the Beat. Swung by Magnolia Terrace, but not before stopping and looking at the absolutely stunning Tiana Topiary. All those twinkling lights in the background, it really does give it a magical feel. But you know what else looks magical? This food, but specifically the bananas foster bread pudding and the beer fly doesn't look too bad as well. So I have picked up the bananas foster bread pudding. All of those words I love, so I can't wait to enjoy this. So let's get a little bit of banana, some of the bread pudding as well. This is a interesting serving of it. I'm used to a bread pudding in a little bit more of like a casserole style, but that's just a sort of deep south thing. And now for me. Whoa. So the bread pudding is banana bread. I love banana bread. This is a sweet dish, but it's mostly like a caramel sweet. So it's a little bit roasted. There's a little bit of that depth of flavor from the caramel to it. The banana adds a light fruitiness. This goes on my best of the fest just because it's hitting some like really weird nostalgia for me. This is good. Caramel. Delicious, <coughs> bananas, still warm, banana bread, still warm through. What a great combo. All right, we're getting into this beer flight, which yeah. is the Urban Artifact Cappy Snacks Fruit Punch Fruit Ale. Long name. Yeah, big Long. mouthful of a name there. They're from Cincinnati, Ohio. Then you've got the Schneider Weiss Love Beer Weiss Beer. Schneider Weiss Love Beer Weiss Beer. Twice the Weiss. Twice the beer. It's from Kelheim, Germany. And then the Parish Brewing Company Ghost in the Machine Double IPA from Broussard, Louisiana. I'm gonna do the Weiss beer, because I love wheat beers. I'm gonna uh, do the IPA, because the, reasons. Yeah, the IPA has been around. They've had that at the festival before, but the other two are new additions. Hence the flight, try a little of everything. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> oh, yes. You're up first, champ. I'm gonna enjoy this. This is really nice. Sometimes wheat beers, which is Weiss beers, are a little bit too heavy for me, even though they're my favorite kind of beer. And by heavy, I just mean it's a lot to drink while you're walking around a hot Epcot day. This has the flavor of a Weiss beer, which is kind of fruity, almost banana-y, but it's still very light and weedy. I'm, I'm into this one. This is a... Dippa. It's a Dippa, but it's also hazy. It's unfiltered. A lot of really good characteristics of a very strong IPA. I can't wait to taste that one based upon the face you're making. Um, pine forward, citrus on the back end. This is a slow sipping beer. If you added some of the... Um... That's <laughs> That one, all the, before we've said, if you don't like IPAs, try this one. That's don't try not, that one. Not this one. This one what? tastes like an IPA. I need fruit. That is, it tastes like a fruit snack. Try it. A warhead, a gusher, and a beer. Walked into a bar. Started a beautiful friendship, and they thought, let's hug, group hug. And when they did that, this was the result. And that, dear children, is how all beers are made, through group hugs. This beer flight is a little all over the place. If you are looking to try a lot of 
very different and um, what's the word niche yeah. types of beer. Give this a shot. You'll probably like at least one of these, but yeah. I mean, I enjoy at least two out of these. And with that, dear friends, we are going to put day one of the festival in the books. I think it was a pretty successful day. Very successful first day of the festival, but it's getting a little too dark to successfully film anything else. So we will see you tomorrow for some more flowers and food and fun. It'll be just a few moments for you, though. Yeah. Good night. Night. Did that work? Maybe. No. Here. <laughs> It's one o'clock. When you're a degenerate, it's morning. <laughs> Welcome back, ma'am fam, to day two of the Flower and Garden Festival. We are back at Epcot today to check out the rest of the topiaries and the outdoor kitchen. So come on, let's go look at some plants. Let's go. Starting today on the world nature side of the park to check out the topiaries that we missed here yesterday and go see the butterfly garden. First up, the Lion King. This is one of my favorite topiaries every year because this is my favorite Disney animated film. And I just love Rafiki holding up Simba right there. And then you've got Mufasa and Sarabi. And I'm always amazed by Mufasa's voluptuous mane. It is glorious. It, it is so glorious. I don't know what plant that is. I'm sure my mom would whenever she's here, she'll tell me. Or someone in the comments, let me know. Actually, I'll just text her. And finishing up the Lion King section, not too far away, you've also got Timon and Pumbaa. They're just so cute like look at the little pink plant that's on pumba the moss i just uh, horticulture team your wizards and before we go to see any other topiaries let's check out the butterfly landing little butterfly garden area now please note as we step inside oh so many butterflies that this section does close before the park closes so be sure to check the app to find out when this actually closes but for now let's just enjoy these beautiful plants and see if molly who so desperately wants this, can get a butterfly to land on her hand. <laughs> butterfly landing is meant to educate you on the life cycle of a butterfly, starting when they are a caterpillar into when they enter a cocoon, like we see here, to when they finally emerge from said cocoon into the beautiful butterflies, the beautiful butterflies that they are. You will also find instructions on how to plant your own butterfly garden if you would like to do so, and al along with a list of plants to plant if you would like to encourage caterpillars to come, their growth and maturation into butterflies as well. It's just so absolutely incredible to see all of these different butterflies flying around the space. It's just such a nice, quiet area. It's really peaceful in here. I enjoy this a lot. After having a nice, relaxing time with the butterflies, we are now checking out the woody Bo Peep, and in my opinion, the best and most hilarious part of this entire topiary, the three sheep. Look at them. Their names are Billy Goat and Gruff. Billy Goat Gruff. And they're connected as one, so they travel as a unit always. These are just so cool to see. Look at all the succulents on Bo Peep's dress. But also, don't look directly into her eyes. Oh no, that's where your soul goes. She, she will, steals it. She yeah. will take your soul. Yeah, yeah, it goes away. All right. It is time to continue eating, ready for our first feeding of the day. So real quick, we're just gonna apparate wrong park to where we left off in World Showcase yesterday. We made it. it. Jinx. Know. You want me a soda? No, 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 not a soda. No, 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 no soda. Give me a beer. Okay, I can do that. Nice. Um, also, apparating is much slower and sweatier than I thought it would be. So much sweatier. Uh, anyway, let's. Uh, we picked up back here at American Adventure. Yesterday we stopped with Magnolia Terrace next to the beautiful Tiana Topiary, and now let's continue on with the rest of the World Showcase. But not funnel cake. Funnel cake Skipping is trash. Funnel cake. Yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, I do like strawberry shortcake. This one does appeal to me, but it's twelve dollars for a mini funnel cake, and we're on a budget, so skipping that one. Instead, we are headed to Japan for our next feeding. I guess it's our first feeding of the second day, but still the next feeding. Time is weird. It's a soup. But before we make it to the booth to order, look how cool this dragon is with the succulents and the Tori Gate and view of Spaceship Earth, A plus topiary. And from Hanami, we have picked up Frushi, as is our want. It's also Molly's favorite from that booth. And the ramen cup. The ramen cup is ramen salad shaken in a cup, as seen here, with fresh vegetables, grilled chicken, and daishi broth with chili oil and yuzu. Shake, 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 I wonder how much is too much. Here we go. I don't want to miss out on this here. This is an interesting setup. I've actually never seen this presented this way before. I'm, oh, I'm eager to try. This isn't going to be pretty. Cheers. 
Mm. So while we're here in the U.S., I apologize for slurping, but in Japan, it's a sign that it is a, it's a compliment to the chef. And compliments are needed. Noodles, cooked beautifully. The sauce, very sesame oil forward, so if you're not a fan of that flavor, you're probably not gonna like this. I, for one, love it. Chili oil is present, but not super powerful. There's just a little bit of spice and zing on the back end, but nothing even registering on the radar, uh, just there for a little bit of uh, extra flavor. The chicken, oh wow, cooked and seasoned really well. This might end up on my best of the fest. This is really good. I'm really enjoying this. This is a, a nice serving size of a dish that I really enjoy. A lot of great well-spiced flavors. I'm a fan. And here is one of my favorite things every year at Flower and Garden, the legendary frushi, which is fruit sushi. So you've got some strawberry, pineapple, and lychee with coconut rice wrapped in a pink soy wrapper, and then it's paired with a house-made raspberry sauce and house-made whipped cream and some toasted cocoa nut on top. Oh, I'm so excited. This one's got a, the, a lot of strawberry. A raspberry sauce dip, a little this. Mm. That goes on my best of the fest every year because I just think it is such a perfect sweet treat because it's simple flavors, fresh fruit, toasted coconut, house-made whipped cream, and then you've got it in a very fun presentation. So I think it's just a perfect dish because it's cute and delicious and like I look forward to eating it every year. Swung by the absolutely stunning Morocco Pavilion and popped into Tangerine Cafe, which had a new item. Really excited to try this one. It is the Mediterranean flatbread. It's got tribula, roasted vegetables, artichoke, olives, and feta cheese. And I'm really jazzed about this because they removed one of my favorite menu items over from Honey Bistro, which is the flatbread. So I'm hoping this will fill that void. It is now time for your friendly allergy PSA. If you have a menu where you're worried about potentially having an item that you are allergic to listed or in the kitchen, one, I recommend checking the application for the allergy menu in the My Disney Experience app. In this section where they have the whatever festival you may be attending menus, you can always look at the allergens listed on that menu. If you would like more assurance, please, Talk to the cast members when you are checking out or ordering your food items because they will call a chef and ask about your specific allergy with a chef on the phone in front of you. That's what I did here because I have an allergy to pine nuts and oftentimes in Mediterranean cuisines, pine nuts do appear. So I asked, we're all good to go with this and I'm excited to dig in. Also, it took like 30 seconds. Yeah, it's not so gonna take a long time. It's real quick. All right, I'm very excited about this because in previous festivals, Tangerine Cafe has done like a trio of dips and Tremula has been my favorite. So. Boop. Here we go. Oh yeah. Yo, that's killer. Mm-hmm. So tremula is what they're using instead of like pizza sauce, which is a spread similar to chimichurri, if you're familiar with that, often used in like Moroccan, Turkish uh, cuisines. It's very simple. There's saffron in it, olive oil, some pepper, a little bit of coriander, and it is fantastic. It is, it is herby and delicious, not spicy. This is a very bright dish, a little acidic, you can taste the saltiness from the black olives, which I've come to love. And I think, I think it's just a really, really solid, good portion sized dish. I think good, well priced, good portion size. I love the roasted red peppers on there, the nutty feta cheese. I wish it was cooked a little bit longer. The crust isn't quite holding up to all the toppings, but overall a really good dish. Up next we are, well, we're skipping East La Fresca because last year we did try the tres leche cake but there are other plant-based options that we want to give a go this year. But what we are not skipping, because it would truly be a crime, is seeing Kermit and Miss Piggy. Their topiaries are amazing. Bonjour, we have made it to France where I waited in the longest line I've waited in yet, besides maybe Germany. Those have been the two most popular booths we've seen. And uh, speaking of popular, look at these adorable characters from one of Disney's most popular films, Beauty and the Beast. You've got Lumiere and Cogsworth right here, and Cogsworth actually like chimes, and at night Lumiere lights up. And then over yonder a little bit, you've also got Belle and the Beast. These are stunning topiaries, absolutely love them. And speaking of stunning, look at this croissant full of cheese. I've never seen anything more beautiful in my entire life. Also duck. Up first from Fleur de Lis is the Pimentel de Canard La Lorange, which is pulled duck confit with an orange sauce and garlic rosemary mashed potatoes. And once again, I would like to apologize for my pronunciation of the French language. I'm trying, I promise. All right, we dive, we duck, we dodge. Here we go. Oh, wow. Okay, first of all, the first thing I wanna point out is the Rosemary mashed potatoes, oh my gosh, are those delicious. The rosemary really does stand out there. The duck 
is deep and rich in flavor. It's a little gamey, the texture is a touch gritty, but it's very, very moist all the way through. An enjoyable experience in my opinion. Uh, the game changer though is that orange sauce. Light zest of orange, not super sweet, but all together, that is just an incredible pairing of flavors. Uh, yeah, this is, this is very tasty. And now it's time for what in the past has been a perfect food. It is the, oh gosh, croissant au fromage de chevre, oeuvres et ali roti. I'm sorry, uh, but that translates to a croissant with goat cheese, herbs, and roasted garlic, which I'm very excited about and not sorry about. Oh, wow. Still going, there you go. Oh my gosh, it smells like garlic. I might cry. Huh. Be still, my cheese and carb loving heart. Oh my gosh, imagine if you will, a warm, freshly made croissant, buttery, flaky, delicious. Shoved right in there, a creamy mixture of goat cheese and roasted garlic, and it punches you in the face with garlic, which I love. This is not only on my best of the fest, this is my best of the fest. I could eat 100 of these. And if you too love cheese and bread, you need to try this. Very quickly crossed the English Channel and have found ourselves in the United Kingdom Pavilion where one, we saw Tinkerbell in her adorable fairy house uh, topiary, and two, now we have found ourselves in the English Tea Garden to do a little tea tour. Tea tour. A tea tour. This is actually a very underrated, little known thing you can do. One, they do have a guided tour two times a day. They are first come, first serve, complimentary tours of the tea garden with a cast member, or anybody can do the uh, tea tour, self-guided tour. And all you have to do is ask the cast member for the map and then find these 12 teas. And if you do that, uh, let them know and you may get a special surprise. So we're gonna go find them all. We're gonna take a picture of each one to prove it because we are nothing if not honest. Mm -hmm. Our integrity is essential. Yep. We completed the tea tour. She stamped our map to prove that we did it. And we each got a tea. Tea. What flavor did you get? Chai. Chai. I got uh, a pure rooibos red tea herbal. Herbal, as you might say. Well, rooibos. Yeah. So that's exciting. It's a fun little activity that you can do and, and get some new tea to try. We've collected our tea and are now taking some time to just admire Winnie the Pooh, Rabbit, Tigger and Eeyore. These topiaries. Oh yeah, and Piglet too, that's correct. Piglet is freaking adorable. I mean, I love Eeyore. Just, I'm sad all the time. That's my guy right there though. I love Tigger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just, these topiaries look so nice. I, uh, Eeyore's mane. Anytime they do the hair sort of situation or like mane, I, I just, I'm, my mind is blown. Stopped by the next Joffrey's cart, the one in between the United Kingdom and Canada. This is the citrus frosted iced tea. It is frozen lemonade, iced tea, and orange tangerine syrup. Chose to make this one boozy by adding a little great goose yodka. and it take me a roll of it. That is delightful. That's somehow even better than the last iced tea. I love that it's like an Arnold Palmer situation, but I am a big fan of citrus. So I love that little zest from the orange in there, which kind of reminds me of like the Tangerine LaCroix, which is one of my favorite flavors. And then you've got the vodka in there, breaking up any sweetness that you might have. Very refreshing. If you like an Arnold Palmer, this is delightful. Heading into Canada, but before we do, stop by to take a look at Captain Hook confronting his traumas, also known as TikTok Croc. You know, Peter Pan just being a little helper. He's just helping Captain Hook work through his past traumas? Yeah, what Peter Pan has done, you see, uh -huh. is he has said, he, it's, it's just like a, a form of immersion therapy. He is bringing TikTok Croc to Captain Hook in order to try and help him overcome his fears. The fears that he created by cutting off Captain Hook's hand and feeding it to TikTok Croc. Uh-huh. He was part of the problem. Now he's trying to be part of the solution. I see. Really stand up guy, that eternal child. Our next step was Northern Bloom, but not before admiring Bambi, Flower, and Thumper topiaries. They're so freaking cute. They're just little babies. We little babies. But what we picked up was the beef tenderloin tips with a mushroom bordelaise sauce, whipped potatoes, and garden vegetables.
This is okay. The Bordelaise is really the shining star of this. Rich and hearty, earthy from the mushrooms, mashed potatoes, very light, fluffy, excellent mashed potato. Uh, the disappointment in here is the beef tips. I think they're seasoned really well. They're just dry. I think that's that's the main takeaway. All the other toppings on the sides, delicious, very rich. Um, just a bummer that the beef's a little bit dry. Scootin' past refreshment port. This is home to the traditional poutine that's here all the time, as well as they have a special plant-based poutine, which is part of the Garden Graves, but we've already finished that, and we are off to our next spot, Swirl Showcase. Swirl Showcase is kind of the new, I guess, permanent residence of this little, it was a fake Starbucks for a while, but for the last few festivals, it's become Swirl Showcase, which is home to soft serve delights. Now, Swirl Showcase is home to the peanut butter and grape jelly soft serve that was at Refreshment Port last year. You can get those individually or swirled together, and uh, one of those flavors is delicious, one of those flavors is terrible. I'll let you guess which one's which. Spoiler alert, I would never eat grape again. But we are here for a different dessert that looks very, very cool, and I'm excited to eat it. All right, friends, this is the liquid nitro honey mascarpone cheesecake with fresh honey, granulated honey, and a honey mead blueberry compote. And I watched the chef make it, and it's so cool. She takes like a scoop of cheesecake filling, puts it in liquid nitrogen, and then it becomes hard enough for her to pick up and put on here. And then she smashed it with a hammer like Yzma and put all the toppings on it. So it if <laughs> I'll smash, smash it, it with, with a hammer. hammer. Wait, oh, to save on postage. Oh, it's like cheesecake filling. I'm gonna get some of the blueberry. Mm. I'm amazed by this a little bit. It's like eating the middle part of cheesecake. So it's very light, it's a little tangy. And then you've got the fresh blueberries on there, a little bit of added sweetness from the honey. This is nice. I really like this because I love cheesecake. I think texturally it's gonna throw some people off because it's this kind of smooth texture, but then there's these like pockets of mascarpone in there. So if you don't like kind of creamy texture food, you probably won't enjoy this. Um, but if you want a nice, you very unique, shareable dessert that's not super, super too sweet, this is lovely. Next up, we stopped by the Honey Bee Stro, a booth all about bees and the honey they produce. In fact, all the dishes here have honey in them, including what we picked up, the chicken and waffles. This is crispy chicken and a honey sweet cornbread waffle with whipped honey butter and spicy honey on top. It's a lot of honey. This is a sizable piece of chicken atop this waffle. A little cross section action there. I'm gonna get a little bit of a smaller bite. That was too strong. I then snapped my chicken away. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First of all, kudos to the size of the chicken on the waffle. Love a good portion size like that. Second of all, the waffle. A little spicy. You can very clearly taste the corn. There are chunks of corn in it. Very tasty. Um, full of flavor on that one. Just peppery, a little smoky. And then the chicken itself fried beautifully, crispy on the exterior. The chicken itself very moist. Has clearly been brined because it's still moist all the way through. But what I love is the hot honey drizzle over top of it. I would add more if I could, but I also love spice. There is a little bit of heat to it. Not a lot of, not a lot of it. Just a little reminder that there is spice and chili in the honey. This is such a nice dish. I, yeah, this goes on my best of the fest. And here we have the influencer in her prime, huddled up amongst all passerby, she carries with her a great and heavy load of beverages, coming from one pineapple promenade. Look at her carefully weaving, having exited into a grand opening. She has found a clearing, and in doing so, finds freedom, and then thusly brings the beverages back without a single spill. Amazing. The display of prowess whilst carrying delights. Also, what'd you get? There's so much. <laughs> okay, well, the thing is, I wanted the beer flight because all the beers there looks good, but the Violet Lemonade Ale is not part of the beer flight. Uh -huh. And in my head, we were like almost to our budget, but not quite there. So I was like, this is either going to put us right under our- <laughs> So we're like, let's blow lemonade, that budget out of the water. Or we're going to be right over. <laughs> 
but I'm pleased to say oh. that we came in a dollar and ten cents under budget. Crushed it. With these items. Well done, Molly. Well job, me. Also with the walking. You navigated oh, thank that you. that thank you. That perilous Both math and walking, <laughs> my strong suits. <laughs> From Pineapple Promenade, we have a plethora of beverages. Here's the aforementioned Beer Flight, which is a couple of tasty looking beers, but it did not include the Violet Lemonade Ale, which is a favorite of mine, inspired by my love of the Frozen Dessert Violet Lemonade, which is a flower and garden staple every year, a non-alcoholic sweet treat. So here is our final uh, booth. Well, we have one more Joffrey's, but our final booth towards the budget. Also, all the flowers are from the uh, living with the land. A lot of the ingredients are. A lot of the herbs and things that go on the dishes at Flower and Garden are from the greenhouses, so you can go see them. But the, the flowers had a little sign, so I thought that was cool. It's just such a delicious treat. This is about the sweetest thing that I personally enjoy. Uh, but it's got a nice floral note because of the violet, and then it tastes like a frozen lemonade, so it's a little bit tart. It'd be delicious with vodka. Um, but it is, it is so delicious. It's a flowering garden staple. It's so beautiful as well. Also speaking of beautiful, before we stopped over there, we took a look at the giant flower bed that lines uh, the water as you walk towards World Showcase and Goofy's over there blowing a dandelion and it's very cute. Uh, but now I'm gonna compare the non-alcoholic frozen to the beer. Oh my God. Oh my God. That beer is so good. It's very similar to the Shandy that we had in citrus blossom but it's got a little bit of floral notes as well it's not quite as tart that is a delightful refreshing beer and novel and fun too what's different about this picture if i stand i'm off right i so. see so now you're like I'm a just, like a child uh, yes <laughs> i'm gonna get you a booster seat um <laughs> i gotta drink my beer I'll get you your bottle. Um, okay, which one do you want to try first? Uh, I'll try the hazy IPA. I will try the tropical hibiscus blonde ale. Lovely. Cheers. Cheers. Boop. Oh. Now this one is more beer-y than some of the other um, beers we've had that have had like a fruit or a floral note to it. You can definitely taste the hibiscus, but it mostly tastes like a blonde ale. If you have had the signature beer over at um, Volcano Bay at Universal, it reminds me of that, but less floral. I like it. As far as the pernicious IPA goes, that is a textbook hazy IPA. It's a wicked weed. Wicked, wicked weed. weed. You wicked, wicked man. <laughs> um, Super pine forward, followed by a little bit of citrus flavor. I mean, incredibly hoppy. You definitely have the fruit though. Uh, it's more towards the back end on yeah. that one. Pineapple-y or something, citrusy. Pineapple, a little bit of grapefruit. That's kind of what I'm getting from this one. Standard hazy Ooh, IPA. Ooh, the tropical Hefe is my favorite. You love Hefeweizen. I do love Hefeweizen wheat beers, and this one, because of the fruit, it makes it a little bit lighter. Normally, Hefeweizen tastes very banana-y, and this one definitely tastes more melony, I would say, but very delicious. Number one for me, I think number two is the hazy, and number three is the blonde. I'm not getting the hibiscus on the blonde. It's a little floral. It's, it's, like it's a, it's a it very, like, very back end. It's like a LaCroix flavoring amount. Yeah, a floral. unicorn's eyelash yeah. of flavor. Um, for me, it's going to be the Wicked Weed Hazy IPA, followed by the Hefe and then ending with the Blonde. Mm -hmm. A fun flight, though. I don't think as good overall as the Citrus Blossom flight. That was my favorite flight we had that is, in the whole festival. That is a top-tier yeah, flight. Yeah, I agree. And our final stop, the final Joffrey's for the Iced Berry Chai Latte. This is iced chai tea, blueberry syrup, milk, topped with whipped cream and cinnamon. Cheers. It's very sweet, and in its defense, it's described as a berry sweet blend, and it is berry sweet, which I do appreciate the pun, but it's no surprise that as a, a fan of not sweet drinks, this is not something I would pick up. I will say, even though the blueberry syrup flavor is very strong, you can still taste the chai tea and the spices from that. Um, I would prefer to get this without the blueberry syrup and just get the iced chai. So if you like sweet drinks, I think you'd enjoy this, but this just isn't for me. And we are headed for our final stop here at the Pineapple Promenade where we will pick up the reward for completing the Garden Grays. We've just picked up our redemption for completing the Garden Grays and it is 
lemon and mango Dole Whip. And we also got some wildflower mix. So if you complete this, you'll get some wildflowers to plant at home or to give to your mom, like Molly is. I'm gonna give them to my mom, who, by the way, told me Mufasa's mane was probably made of coconut husks and that the sheep were probably made of spider plants, but she needs to check closer to be sure. You also get this very cute little cup, which is like hard plastic and reusable, so. Cute little prize. Oof, that is so good. It's nice and tart. A little bit of extra sweetness from the mango, but mostly it tastes like limeade. Very, very delicious. I do like doing these crawls. Not only do I like getting a prize because I'm competitive, uh, but I like that I encourage you to try some food that maybe you wouldn't otherwise. If I'm being perfectly honest, the Garden Greats is not my favorite of the foodie crawls. That honor goes to, of course, the fromage montage at Food & Wine because it's cheese-based. Um, and while I did like several things, most importantly the corn, uh, I probably wouldn't eat a lot of the items on the Garden Greats again just because they're not something I would normally pick. However, I love that they're encouraging folks to try different plant-based items. And if you're a plant-based eater or vegetarian, I think you're gonna love it. And as I always say, if you're already gonna buy several of these items, you might as well try the crawl out, get yourself a free prize. And, uh, and try something new. Maybe you'll find a favorite. And with that, we have eaten our way around World Showcase and all of the flower and garden booths. So without further ado, it's time for Alan and Molly's worst of the fest and best of the fest. Let's start with the worst slash probably wouldn't get again sure. listings here. What's yours? I hate to say it. Yeah. I really do. Okay. It hurts my soul. I'm sorry. The beef tips from Canada. Oh, yeah. I, uh... I'm just sort of disappointed yeah. in them. Oh, I'm mad really... you're just disappointed. Yeah, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I got to be honest. I didn't have anything during our trip through Flower and Garden that was really bad. Yeah. Uh, but there are a couple things that I would not get again, and that's at the top of the list. For me, it's got to be the grape soft serve. That's last year. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It Wait hurt. a minute. It We're hurt. bringing in other years? I, I think it is easily the worst thing at this festival. It tastes like medicine, and I oh. just really didn't like it. And nothing I ate this year... Even, it, so I a full year, I and you're not, you've not recovered. I don't know if anything I've ever eaten at a festival compares to how much I didn't like that. Oh, my God. So I think that I think that's easily the worst thing at this festival. If you make me pick something from this year, it would be the strawberry rhubarb upside down okay, cake. Okay. Not because of flavor, but because of texture. But, boy, I'm telling you, that grape, you really, that grape jelly soft so serve hurt, over the it, fences. It hurt me. Quick relocation because uh, wind. the wind. I wind. fear the wind. Yes. But... With that, when decide, block now, do the corn maze here. Maze, yes. It's not a corn maze. The maze maze. You might as well have said corn corn. Anyway, <laughs> behind the maze here, <laughs> best of the fest time. For me, my best of the fest is as follows. The Black Forest Ham Pretzel Bread from Germany. The Ramen Bowl from Japan. The Chicken and Waffles from the Honey Bee Stro the banana bread pudding found in America, and the citrus beer flight from the citrus blossom. Molly, what's yours? Now, mine is hard to narrow down because there are so many like long-standing favorites I have at this festival that I have yeah. to get every year. Yeah. Um, so I tried to mix it up and add in some new things as well, but these are some of my favorites. I loved the tamale in Mexico. Of course, shout out to Crab Rangoon in China. Frushi in Japan. The Herb cheese croissant in France. That's number one forever and always in my heart. The violet lemonade, both the ale and the slush from Pineapple Promenade. That feels like two things. I, that's fine. And I'm picking an extra one. Uh, shout out to the corn, because I love the corn. Maze. And the maize, if you will, from Farmer's Feast. Um, I also really like that Black Forest ham thing. I also liked that fruit punch beer. I also really liked the duck. Like, I don't think we ate anything really bad this year. I that's think the true. food is very good this yeah. festival. It was very solid. The shrimp in the orange shrimp. That was a shrimp, sleeper that was like hit. A sleeper that was a surprise, hit. Like, yeah. I really think either we picked really well or just the food's really good this year. And beyond the food, there's just so much to see and do here at the Flower and Garden Festival, including the topiaries. I what, what was your favorite? Ooh, that's hard. Uh, you want to know mine? Yeah, I'm trying to decide. So I love Dante oh, as a part of the Coco yeah. setup. That was what just, I was thinking. It's just so cool with how the topiary itself, like the marigolds are lifting him up. I Yeah. It broke my brain. That it's so beautiful. simple. It's, it's not like a larger grand topiary, but it is so 
so beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, I guess I should say Buzz because he's my favorite character, <laughs> but I really love Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Uh, I think those ones are so beautiful. And also, how can you not love the new Baby Groot one? Uh, also, the Lion King one. I, I love them all. This is my favorite time of year at Epcot. It's just so beautiful everywhere you look. There's flowers everywhere. Oh, the Lady and the Tramp one is really good. This Encanto one. Like, I just love them all. I just love being at Epcot this time of year because this already beautiful park is somehow even more beautiful and alive with so much color. I just love it this time of year. <laughs> Asks for favorite topiary. Gets all topiaries. Gets all of them. Except for that the Bo Peep one. It's, it's definitely not <laughs> the Bo Peep one. <laughs> it does stare into your soul. <laughs> but I like the sheep. Another fun thing we've done at the festival is grab a couple magic shots with some of the PhotoPass photographers. They are really fun, so if you want to grab those, make sure you talk to PhotoPass. And the last thing we have to enjoy at this festival is the light show on Spaceship Earth. They do these light shows every couple minutes on Spaceship Earth where they do different lights and music, and they have a couple that they rotate through normally, but they add a special one in for the festivals, and it's Colors of the Wind during Flower and Garden. They also do Isabella's song, What Else Can I Do from Encanto, which is beautiful in front of Spaceship Earth, but it's even more beautiful if you stand in the gardens with the new light fixtures in the ground. Absolutely stunning. Make sure you watch that when you're here. Well, that is a wrap on the Flower and Garden Festival. Let us know if you are coming to the festival this year. But until next time, friends, be sure to like this video. Subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to join with the man fam in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. Links for all that down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been blutiful. Bloomtiful. It has been... Bloomtiful. It has been a feastival. Oh. Yeah. It's been... Unboom leaveable. Unbloom leaveable. Because oh. it's like blooms. Bloomazing. I think we're we should quit while we're ahead. <laughs> Bloomtacular. Bloomtastic. Night.